Greetings, fellow electronics enthusiasts. Welcome back to another episode of Cool Electronics Guy, where the electronics are cool and the guy, well, the jury's still out on that one. So I'm not sure if any viewers noticed, but we didn't post a video last week. Uh, we try to make a new video every week, but last weekend, my Boy Scout troop and I went camping and had a fantastic time. We went uh, camping up in the Adirondacks, exploring through the mountains of upstate New York. That was a great time, but we're glad to be back. Let's get started by checking out our beer of the day. Today's beer of the day is from Drecker Fargo Nodak Brewing Company, located in Fargo, North Dakota. This one's called Slang Du Jour. It is a cranberry, raspberry, lemon, strawberry cobbler, sour a la mode, fruited kettle sour beer. That is a mouthful. It, uh, it's not very high in alcohol. It weighs in at about 5%. And uh, as soon as I tasted the first sip of this, I was in love. And uh, I was also very surprised. The uh, consistency of this beer is more thick than any other beer I've ever had. It's almost like a milkshake consistency, but not quite. Uh, the fruit flavors come through very strong. It tastes more like a fruit juice than a beer. Um, although there are some very subtle hop flavors coming through. Uh, I think it's a wonderful summer beer. Something you could drink in huge gulps on a hot summer day right after mowing the lawn and feel very satisfied with uh, its thirst quenching properties. Um, this one's like nothing you ever had. It's a real treat. Uh, I highly recommend this beer. I give it a 9.5 out of 10. I don't give it a 10 because I wish there was just a little more alcohol per volume, but that's just me nitpicking, I guess. So uh, please check this one out. You won't be disappointed. Now let's work on some electronics while we sip on our nice cold alcoholic beverage. All right, today we're gonna work on the ninth project in the Arduino starter kit. It's called Motorized Pinwheel. Arduino says that this project should take about 45 minutes to build and program. And of course, we're gonna give you the expedited version through the magic of video. Uh, they say this is a level three out of five project and that it builds on what we learned in, uh, from projects one through four. The components that we're going to use today for this project are one 10K ohm resistor, one 1N4007 diode, one tact switch, one motor, electric motor, one 9 volt battery, one MOSFET, and if you don't know what that stands for, it's a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, um, one 9 volt battery strap, and several jumper wires. The uh, main topics we're going to focus on with this project is um, understanding how to control motors. Motors require more current uh, than our develop, uh, development board pins can supply. Um, they can also generate their own current. This is called induction. Induction can damage your circuits um, if you don't understand how it works. But if you plan for it, you can use uh, motors for some pretty cool applications like uh, moving things. What a surprise. Um, <laughs> once you develop your motor skills, you get it? Motor skills? <laughs> um, you can take the idea, you can uh, take these ideas into any project uh, uh, and to create your own. Um, let's talk a little bit about transistors. Uh, first of all, transistors are absolutely amazing. Uh, I just read an article this morning that uh, China has developed a new transistor. The size of it is 0.34 nanometers. That's like the size of an atom. So now we're going to be able to pack even more transistors onto an uh, integrated circuit, which is really going to just uh, enhance our technology even more. But uh, uh, that's a little off track. Uh, let's see. Um, transistors were invented at uh, Bell Labs on uh, December 23rd, 1947. It's a long time ago. But uh, just a quick thought, though. Um, allegedly, in 1947, uh, on July 7th, a UFO crashed in Roswell, New Mexico. Some people find it odd that almost six months after the Roswell incident that we miraculously have the invention of the transistor. And we all know that's changed the world in a remarkable way. Uh, just a little side note there. 
Uh, the transistor replaced the vacuum tube, which allowed us to make our electronics much smaller. Um, but if you're a musician like myself, you probably still want an amplifier with vacuum tubes rather than a solid state setup. Um, the main function of a transistor um, uh, is for uh, rapid switching of electrical signals and also to amplify electrical signals. Um, there's um, different kinds of transistors, but today we'll be working with the MOSFET. Again, like I said, it's a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Um, there's three legs on the MOSFET. There are the gate, drain, and source and are thus explained. The source provides current input, the gate regulates the flow of current, and the drain is where all the current flows to and out of. Um, so we're gonna play around with the MOSFET today. We're also gonna use an electric motor. Um, everyone knows what a motor is, but do you understand how it works? In simple terms, a motor is a device that converts electrical energy to mechanical energy through electromagnetism. Um, this is done through induction, which we mentioned earlier. Induction is the process where uh, changing the electrical current in a wire can generate a changing magnetic field around the wires. When we apply electricity to the motor, the, uh, wound, the wound, there's wound copper inside it. It creates a magnetic field that causes the shaft to spin. Um, also, if we re reverse this process and spin the shaft, we can generate electricity. Uh, if you connect an LED to the motor leads and spin the shaft, the LED will light. Um, if it doesn't, try spin it the other way and you, you'll get results one way or the other. Um, we can thank Mr. Thomas Davenport from Vermont for uh, inventing this device way back in 1834. That was uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, and here we are wiring up the circuit. Let me just talk about this wiring process. Um, we're going to connect the power and ground to the breadboard through the Arduino. What a surprise. It's the same that we've done in every single project. Nothing different there. Uh, we're wiring up to 5 volts. Uh, next we're going to add, as you can see on there, a tack switch to the board. Uh, one side goes to power, the other to digital pin 2. Uh, make sure you add a 10k ohm resistor, a pull down resistor to ground on the digital output pin of the switch. Um, next we're going to connect uh, grounds together to make a common ground. You always have to do this when using a circuit with different voltages. Um, we're going to add the 9 volt battery strap and connecting the ground to the Arduino ground with a jumper. Uh, we'll attach the motor's lead to the 9 volt power. Um, we placed the MOSFET on the board. The metal tab should be facing away from you. Um, digital pin 9 goes to the gate, which is the uh, left pin on the MOSFET. One leg of the motor connects to the drain, which is the middle pin of the MOSFET. And the last leg of the MOSFET is the source. This should get connected to ground. Um, connect the motor's voltage supply to the board. And uh, finally, we're going to add a, a diode. Connect the anode to the ground of the motor. Uh, and the cathode, which is the striped negative end, to the power uh, of the motor. And remember, uh, a diode is polarized. So you're probably thinking, um, you can see our diode on there. Uh, maybe it's too small for you to see. But um, it looks like it's on there backwards. And if you're you know, saying that to yourself, that, that's a good question. Um, it's to prevent the backflow of electricity from the motor going back into the circuit. That's why that's there, and that's why it's in that orientation. So um, we're going to wrap up this uh, wiring. We're just about done, and we're going to move on to coding. Now, before we start coding this, um, we need to actually build this pinwheel assembly. As you can see there, um, we have the motor, and it's going to that cardboard template that came with the kit. And we can tip that forward. You can see the other side of it. Let's tip that towards the camera a little bit so we can see the colors and you can see um, that's the outside of it. Uh, you can see um, that template uh, that came with it. Um, they ask you to use a compact disc so we have a, a compact disc there. You set it inside on top of the cardboard and you can see how there's little tabs and that uh, that cardboard piece just wraps around the CD uh, and that CD gives some structure to our pinwheel so it's not flopping around. Uh, the Arduino Starter Kit book says you can use glue 
Um, there's like little tabs, but we just put some masking tape on the back of that, but that's the back. Um, the front is uh, right there. So uh, again, you can glue it or uh, you can throw some tape on quick like we did. The tape's not pretty, but you know, that's okay. And as you can see, uh, we've completed uh, the coding, the programming for this project. Not very long coding. Um, you can see in our picture here my, my Nickelodeon mouse pad and uh, my little phone charger I made, my little wireless phone charger. Charging my phone up there. But uh, yeah, that's it for code. Pretty, uh, pretty sparse for this project, but uh, Hey, that's all we need to make it work. All right, we've uh, finished the programming and uh, we hooked up our nine volt battery, which uh, I didn't have any, so I had to take one out of my multimeter for this project. Um, go ahead and push the button now and we're gonna see if it works. Push and hold it down and look at that. Oh, I think it's cruising. Um, if you can see the center of that pinwheel, uh, the yellow part there, it's supposed to plug into that hole of a CD. Um, the way the book talks about it, the impression I get is it's supposed to fit in there snug, but it didn't. Um, I, um, from the back side, got my hot glue gun out and I hot glue gun, I hot glued that onto the back of the CD. So that's one little problem. Um, that I noticed with the project, um, but what was easily overcome. So, um, you know, if you're building this, you might have to uh, hot glue gun, hot glue that back on with your hot glue gun. Um, but boy, that thing is cruising. Look at it go. I don't know if you can hear that, but I mean, it's humming. So, uh, that's a pretty cool project. So, we're going to play around with this for a few minutes and. Um, See uh, what else we can do with it and have some fun. All right. Well, I hope you got a little more knowledge out of motors, and this project will maybe help you to be creative and uh, maybe make a make your own project um, similar to this. But it was a great little project. So uh, now that you've learned how to use an electric motor, electric motor, you can come up with your own cool projects. And I want you to feel free to share your ideas and comments below. Uh, next week's project will be the ninth one in the starter kit. It's called Zoetrope. And this is going to be the coolest project yet. So make sure you stay tuned in. Uh, thank you so much for watching. We appreciate your support. Make sure you like our video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. Until next time, drink some good beers and make some cool electronics. Have a good one.